15. Uh, frick, I'll never be able to do this. Well, if that's your mind voice, then this video is for you. You don't need to wake up at 4 o'clock when you start self-improvement and I can give you more easier ways to start right in this video and I'll be explaining the parts of my journey as well. Let's start right now. So right now, we don't have time to dilly-dally around and this video is gonna be in 10 minutes so that I don't end up overcomplicating jack shit for you and yes, I'm gonna give you what you need to be working on right now and I'm gonna be teaching you how to work on them in the next 10 minutes. Okay, first of all, the most important aspect is sleep. If you're not sleeping enough, the other things aren't really gonna fall in line. So I'm gonna show you how I fix my sleep right now. So when you look at this place, you're gonna realize that this looks like a normal window, except that is like a close over thing. Now, don't be confused. This is not to stop light from entering when it's the night time. This is for a whole different purpose. Let me tell you about that story right now. So what was that for, bro? Well, let me like bring you down a little bit. Yep. So what was that for? Well, that was this guy. That was this guy who kind of like played this music called Abhirami Andadi every day in the morning at 4.45 a.m. And it kind of freaked my sleep up. Like quite literally, my sleep schedule end up, ended up getting so backward that I kept waking up at 3.15. <sighs> that was painful, bro. I would only sleep for like five hours and 45 minutes or five hours, even if I slept at all. I would go to sleep at like 9 a.m. fearing that idiots speeches or songs and they'd be like abhirami andadi and every time i'd wake up at 9 45 in the night because they freaking played it every single time that time now they do play it that wooden board is for like cutting it off to a certain level where i can actually sleep it's still there you can still hear it if you're in the room but you won't be waking up if you're in deep sleep and yeah uh, I kind of fix my sleep after having fricked it over. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you to do. The first step in fixing your sleep is as follows. What I'm going to say is going to sound very caveman-esque, but well, you've got to go out when you start the day and get some sunlight in your eyes. Why? Well, because of this. Now, bro, I'd like you to take a second to imagine our cavemen ancestors. Like, they were in the caves and in the morning they went out to hunt, right? They had this bad habit of looking at the sun every day in the morning and their brain was like, hmm, seems far enough. We're gonna like use that to set our clocks every day. And what happened was... <sighs> what? It caused our brains to freak their clocks over whenever we woke up and we never looked at the sun. So the clock kind of ticked in a weird way when we stopped looking at sunlight. There's an other system in our body that is used to regulate sleep up to a certain extent. It's called the adenosine cycle. That's too complex. Let me like just simplify it down. It's like our body uh, puts out this chemical at certain points of time in our day to make us feel sleepy. You've seen your cat or dog sleeping, right? He, he kind of sleeps really well and at random points in the day. And I'm pretty sure most of us were not able to do that. And I think that is because when they're at the peak of the adenosine cycle, they sleep. And in the afternoon after lunch, that's why we feel sleepy. That's like an adenosine cycle high. That chemical is put out and you're like, but adenosine alone cannot work the clock inside the head. These two systems together, they have to go in together. And the circadian cycle, which I talked about earlier, that, are, that the bad habit the cavemen people made and the cycle it formed, that is essentially the most important part. So once you've got your sunlight exposure down and everything else, 
your sleep is still gonna look like it's fricked but it's kind of a lot better and let me tell you how you unfrick it further so you see brother this is like my room of rest my bedroom as i showed you earlier there is not much going on over here but one thing i can tell you is that you shouldn't be doing any other activity than sleeping in your bed reading it's kind of okayish but it's because of the following reason so when you use a place for something your brain kind of attaches it with that thing so by the same reasoning if i draw a lot on my drawing desk and i forget to study here for my school and other things what happens is if i draw a lot here i might feel guilty that school work is going to happen here or if i study a lot here i'll feel guilty when i'm drawing which is kind of weird and it's a very vicious cycle and we can quite avoid that with sleep too a lot of us we don't think about it this way but the thing is sleep is a lot like meditation you have to have your thoughts be cleared like that's when the deepest sleep comes at least that's what i found to be true what do you do when you're meditating well that's a bigger question first we'll figure out sleep and then we'll go to meditation okay the big thing about sleep is guess it take a guess i gave you the clues before yeah if you're thinking your thoughts in your bed your brain is going to associate thinking time with bed time which is a very bad thing so we're going to have to lay out some sleep hygiene rules for ourselves like when we wake up in the middle of the night if our brain ticks and it says like bro you've been in bed like 10 minutes you shouldn't take a clock or look at it right now but if your brain says that says that your thoughts they're worth having for 10 minutes or if you're just like i've had these many thoughts and these are the thoughts i could have in 10 minutes this is going to require some awareness on your part but if you do get it right you're going to be able to measure time accurately and once you think it's 10 minutes just get out a little bit sit there let your brain relax and you can get back to sleep and try again the second time you can like be in bed for like 20 minutes 30 minutes that doesn't really disrupt the rhythm as per my testing and by the way if you want to take a look at my progress i'm sleeping nowadays for like 7 hours and 30 minutes not that much i have had my 9 hour days in the past but i've also had my 5 hour days in the past and 4 hour 30 minute days in the past and i think this is how you get from there to here and then sunlight everything is also very important that actually sets the clock on which you work on top of with the sleep hygiene and yeah nobody talks about sleep hygiene so i ha- i thought it was my responsibility to teach you and that's the first habit of self improvement yeah so bro now i'm going to be talking to you about meditation and exercise these are the next two habits that i'm going to be teaching you this is best done in the morning and you can fill in your morning routine however you like with these two in mind and also don't forget to get in your sunlight by the way because that i found to be tremendously helpful and yeah that's mostly what i wanted to say now i'll take to demonstrating so while meditating the easiest way to do it is to have a timer in your head and that ticks by so this way you won't lose focus and you know the passing of time what i like to do is count in super seconds like like i'm thinking in my head 0001000200030004 this is like a really long thing and i can like breathe in for 30 seconds hold for 30 seconds and uh leave out for 30 seconds i think i'm pretty advanced at this because i've been doing this for a year i wouldn't expect you to do this start with something like 5 seconds see that's very easy and you can hold in for 5 seconds and breathe out for 5 seconds when i kind of like started i could like 
not feel the improvement in a day. This takes a lot of time to feel the improvement in. Like I was still lacking self-control. I would go into my trigger environment and do whatever the hell I did. Like this was two years ago, bro. So don't judge me based on that. But you get my point, right? It takes time. Three months, it'll start working. Give it three months. When you're meditating, I did it for 15 minutes. I did not expect you to go that far. That is crazy long, at least in my opinion, for a beginner to do. One minute. Let's start with that. Be like... So I think you got the inhale and exhale part, right? But you forgot the pause in between. Like, you have to really think about this. So your nose, right? When you breathe in, what happens is all the air goes in and it goes into your lungs. And if you put some information into your computer and you ask for a very huge calculation, you obviously know it's going to take time. So you're going to have some processing time in between. And that's the hold. You don't have to stress about putting yourself in this breathing state constantly in your life. But I find that it helps soothe my nerves a little bit. But don't do this in the night. There's a different way to meditate that can help you calm your nerves better. This is more for like focusing, remembering things and concentrating properly. Okay. And yeah, that was about meditation. So this is Monish from the future right here. I forgot to tell you this. This is a really important piece of information. So when you're meditating, bro, like this happened to me a lot, like there will be this random thought, oh, when will I finish coding that application that I started coding on my PC? Or like, oh, when will I start start work on this other thing? Whoa, can I read a comic book? Whoa, can I go into my relapse mode? All of these questions would come into my mind. So the thing you need to do while you're meditating or just trying to sleep in general is not beat yourself up when you get those thoughts. Be like, oh, thought, I need to go back to that place where I started and I should kind of clear it. I should be free of it. I should be free of it. That's what you should say when you get a thought. That's about it. You can move on to the next part. You can take to doing that. I think you actually had your first mindful breath today. If you did it with me this time, you've had your second. Now we're going to take to talking about a very simple form of exercise. So, yup, here's like a tiny little story. And with this, we're going to be wrapping today's thing up. Yeah, like these are the first three base habits on top of which you can build off. And there's one more thing I'll give you at the end. And that will be about it. So I'm going to give you a few basic exercises. Because when you're starting out, if you go with more complex things, it's going to hurt your progress and your soul. Right now, what you're going to see me do is like a push up, a curl and a sit up. And you're going to have to do it with me. Because like one push up ain't that hard, bro. Like give it a try. Shit. Yeah. Yep, bro, we all fine here. I'm gonna demonstrate the posture you need to be in. In like 3, 2, 1, you're gonna see me. So the most important thing in push-ups is that your back has to be straight as a log. Let me show you. Are you seeing me? Wait. Okay, like, even straighten this out a little bit. So my best suggestion is to start with wide arm like I am doing right now, these are easy to do. The closer your arms are to your shoulders, the easier it is to perform, at least in my opinion and in a lot of other people's opinion. Okay? Workout two, we have ab curls. I'm gonna do one and demonstrate it for you. Like look here, your Legs have to be, like your knees have to be aligned. Otherwise, you're going to hear a snapping sound and maybe it's going to cause bone problems in the future. I don't know. I used to hear them when I had bad posture. Look here. 
this is like a basic version of curls if you can't do the full version let me show you like the full version right now and yep that was it that was like a basic version of curls and yeah last of this uh, stuff is going to be sit-ups and i'm going to demonstrate right now look at it like wait two seconds this little shit ain't be falling down on me again yeah that's better <laughs> okay what you do is stretch out your arms and you sit down and you stand back up when i like started this was like really easy for me mainly because i used to do skips when i first started so if this schedule to you sounds really daunting like the morning push-ups curls and sit-ups by the way i did only one in front of you because i don't really know how many you can do so that i could have done a do along session with you but i would suggest that 10 would be a good place to start once you're in some form or some shape actually let me show you it's gonna just be you doing this and sitting in an indian toilet position <laughs> and then just standing up. What you gotta do is, see to it that both the knees are getting the pressure equally. Let me show you. Look here. You're gonna have to focus on your hips. Are they getting the pressure? Because my initial mistake, at least in my exercise journey, was that I kind of left this off and it freaked me over and my knees were kind of paining because one was getting the whole charge and the other wasn't doing jack shit. And yep, if you want to get even further into the journey, then I have one more step for you, bro. Wait a second. Okay, so skipping can be a good way to exercise too. Like it's a very easy way. It's a very simple way. You can start with 200 skips a day. And yep. That was about it for exercises and meditation. These three habits would be the three I'd keep if I had to keep any. Because if your health's like unfricked, you can do everything else. And now, last, we are at the end of this video. I have taught you three habits and one more could be reading books. If you take a look at this place, that's called the drawer, you'll find a lot of self-improvement books. The one thing I suggest is to start small. Like, let me show you the type of stuff I used to read at the start. Yeah. If you've like read in the past and you want to like start again, at least, you start with smaller books. Like, look at how thin this boy is. Like, he's just 136 or something like that pages. And this book too is thin, within 150, I suppose. Let me even check it out. 280 but the words are quite big in that one and then there are like fictional books fictional books are better because they do a better job of hooking you in and i think it's better than scrolling your phone at the last point of your day and yeah those were all the habits that i had to offer you in this video if you're getting started just think about these there is journaling that is scheduling all of that stuff you can learn that as time progresses Start your morning with exercise, meditation and stuff. And if you're addicted to pornography, one tip I would give is to stop isolating yourself. Because when I did that, wait, let me show you. Like that door right there, that leads to my trigger environment. And that room, that re leads to my eventual hell. Because I'm used to doing it there <laughs> once I started. So if you want to quit any pornography habit or something like that, the best thing to do is to get rid of that place. Because, one, if you're like in the one per day type stuff, this works really well. If you're beyond that, I don't really know how I can help you because I've never been beyond that. Except on some rare occasions when I'm depressed by school. The other thing is to fix the cause of the addiction. You may think you're relapsing because you're a loser, but there could be other repressed emotions behind it. You're gonna have to find ways to let it out. Like find some purposeful work you like to do. And other thing I found about purpose in the human lab that helped me was I was like, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a artist in when I was a child. And then I found aspects of what I loved in different things. And then I was like, oh, 
this is what I want to be now. And that is how purpose finding works. At least in my experience with the Huberman Lab, Lab podcast and the work I do now, it gives me great joy. So if you find purpose, work becomes joyful. It's still very hard, very hard. Sometimes you don't want to get there and work. But it's a shit ton of times easier than just sitting there and studying organic chemistry because your parents told you to. And also, if you leave out pleasure, like the cheap stuff, this is a Miyamoto Musashi thing, don't seek out pleasure for its own sake. If it comes with other activities that you do for your purpose, then accept it. If not, leave it. And that is what I had to say for this video. Thank you for hearing me out. And maybe you got some wisdom out of this. Bye. All the best. And also, when you're making a schedule, remember to keep it realistic. Because if you don't, you're gonna freaking fail. 9 out of 10 times. Right now, I'm going to be talking about the growth mindset. And we're going to start off the video like that. Or end this video like that. It's a demonious decision. Okay, I'll let him decide and we'll continue with our talk now. Okay, bro. Now I'm gonna take Miles Morales at your analogy. So you remember this scene where they had like two cakes, right? Like imagine these two are like cakes. A lot of people, they thought of how do I write stuff on this one cake? How do I write the name on this one cake? But what did Miles do? He thought, why not just get two cakes and write the name on top of it? Miles was in better position when he knew about the goal than the others who just wanted something to be fixed. Like, there has to be this one cake and there has to be this one name on top of it. Miles wasn't like that. The growth mindset is believing that the thing can be done and also believing that you can be flexible to achieve it and you can achieve it instead of the fixed mindset, which is like, ha ha ha, I'm an artist, I'll never learn other things. Like, think about this, bro. Rohan Kishibe, he's a comic book artist, but he goes to the gym. <laughs> That's all I can offer you, if you want specific advice on the growth mindset. With that embodied, you can turn your Sigma grind set and your Beta mindsets into the most amazing thing in the world, which is a growth mindset. And here are a few mistakes I did in rapid fire. First, I did not consider my energy levels throughout the day. You have to set out realistic schedules. Otherwise, you're going to end up getting fricked in the process and not following it at all. And the second advice is to, is to avoid stimulating stuff at the night. And that gives you a better night of rest by.